Hello everyone. Welcome to the brand new episode of The Business Queens. Today we have amazing and beautiful Miss Anshita who's the founder of Sun India Preschools. She wears quite a lot of hats. She is a consultant, she is an author, she is also a coach, basically a gratitude and mindful coach. So she has been doing so many things. Let's welcome her to the show. Welcome Anshita. Thank you so much uh, to, uh, for inviting me on this podcast. Uh, it's completely my privilege. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. So Anshita, tell us your journey. How did you plan of starting a preschool? Because, you know, doing MBA in project management and then shifting all the way to schools. How did this thought come to your mind? Okay, so what happened was my journey has been uh, quite a roller coaster journey. So uh, I always wanted to be an interior designer and uh, I was pursuing my interior designing and I was in the first year of my college. I was also doing graduation simultaneously. With that, uh, you know, what happened was I got married at an age of 18. Okay. So it was, yes. So uh, it was all of a sudden, maybe God had different plans. And then uh, I had, uh, I just completed two years of interior designing. And then I thought that, okay, um, let me just start, keep on studying and let, let me just keep on with my studies. So when I just finished my MBA, my, uh, in middle of this, I conceived and I uh, gave birth to my first baby. And uh, when he was two years old, I went to see a lot of preschools. For his admission, when I went to different preschools, I realized that there is a gap between how a preschool should be and how what services were being provided with. So that was the time when it just clicked an idea that I should be opening up a preschool and I should be opening up a preschool with international standards and uh, so that, you know, um, people over here can also have uh, that exposure and you know the children because this is the most important um you know stage where you know these kids are like sponges till the age of five we know it that 80 percent of the brain develops so right. when we are dealing with that kind of age it is you know it was very very crucial that you know we provide them with the right exposure we provide them with the right education and then that idea just clicked it that why not let me just open up a preschool. So from interior designing, I went into education sector and it had been a complete uh, journey where uh, I then started, uh, I went to UK for my child psychology course and for my uh, diploma in early childhood education because I wanted to learn more about it. So I went to West Yorkshire. And after coming from there, then I opened up the preschool and then that journey has been ongoing. Yeah, there. so you know, whatever you are saying, I can resonate so well with it. And I'm very sure everybody would resonate because when we are in schools and colleges, we have different plans for us. But when it comes to reality, it is entirely different. Like when you were saying that, I was thinking like in my college, I always wanted to do a corporate job. And now I'm working as a business coach for women entrepreneurs. So it's entirely different from what I actually wanted. So I, so it's rightly said, you know, destiny has its own plans most of the times. Yes. So, you totally, know, starting totally. a preschool and then moving to training and consultancy of edtech startups and preschools. How did this happen? So, uh, you know, always life, uh, you know, whenever it is clearly said that, that life throws you lemons, what you make out of it is your, uh, you know, uh, that is your cup of tea. So I've always made lemonades out of it. And uh, what happened was during COVID times, uh, schools were not working. And that time everything came to online. So in 2020, what happened, the complete physical schools were shut down and it just came out to be that, you know, um, we have to do everything online. And during that time, I got into edtech startups as well. And I started consulting them because I got an experience of more than half a decade. So mm -hmm. I wanted to use that experience and I wanted that, okay, uh, this is the new way of learning. And that time, online and virtual learning was the only way. 
so that is how i entered into edtech startups and then i started consulting edtech startups and with that i went into consulting i went into uh, you know different type of training programs because uh, i started training different people also how to you know go about with their um, how to go about in their schools and because the school uh, my school model was profitable so most of the preschool owners also wanted to know how you know they could achieve that so that is how training program started and i am a very big believer of gratitude i've been practicing it from last decade like complete from last 10 years i've been practicing gratitude myself so in covid times it just occurred to me that why not let's start teaching gratitude to these young kids and that's how i became a gratitude coach and i became a, i became a gratitude coach and then i started doing it yeah so you have talked about something very very important that i also believe in you know when it comes to gratitude me and my son we are in a habit of practicing gratitude daily what we do is before we go to bed we talk about our blessings for the day so he, he shares his and i share mine most of the times my husband also does it but if he is away my son will do it at his end he'll say okay i'll say papa's as well i'll say his blessings for the day as well so we do it and gratitude is something which really shifts your focus from all the negativities to the positive so tell us something what suggestions would you give to our audience how can they actually practice gratitude and how would it help them in you know such stressful times because it is so dynamic a lot of competition and our primary audience are business owners so how would it help them in managing their stress levels managing their you know thought process so if i say that you know for me gratitude is everything and you know if if you're a business owner the only advice that i want to give you to multiply your businesses to start practicing gratitude with your employees start practicing gratitude with your clients and start practicing gratitude with the money because money is also an energy and when we talk about energy if we give gratitude to money and if we give gratitude to our clients and to our employees we can see our business growing 2x and 3x so uh, i have always seen this that you know business owners who have been using gratitude get more opportunities they can easily you know uh, grab more and more businesses and clients also love their businesses much much more so uh, i always believe that uh, gratitude is very very important and we should all be practicing gratitude yeah thank you for adding that and you being a gratitude coach i would really love if you could share some of your tips and tricks how can they actually do it like what are the action steps to practice gratitude because you know when it comes to gratitude most people think that only thanking is gratitude so what is the right way of practicing it so when i talk about the right way of practicing gratitude it is first of all first and foremost is saying thank you from heart what happens is we generally if we get something we just say thank you but that is not really gratitude gratitude is when you feel it from your heart and when you give it from your heart so it also has uh, being appreciative you know you can be appreciative of your employees if you are giving compliments to your employees that wow you did a great job you know complimenting them them and appreciating them also you know when when it falls about clients you are thanking them for taking services from you so when you are doing these uh, you know particular ways of you can see that you know your business will start multiplying because you start giving good vibes to your business right also whenever you receiving money what you can do is whenever you are receiving money say thank you for the money and whenever you are paying the bills say always write on the bills thank you paid it is a very very important practice that you know and it is a very small practice but you can see miracles happening if for example uh, you know there is a bill that is unpaid what you can do is you can just write over it thank you for the money even if you do not have money to pay that vendor that time itself like for example if you have got a bill in the month of june and you feel that you know that particular amount will come in july 
what you can do is you can just write over it thank you for the money and you will see miraculously some from somewhere that money will be there and you will be able to pay the bill and once you have paid the bill you can write thank you paid over it so this is a very small step that you can do it in your business and you can see so many different you know um, you you can see the difference Anshita, when you are saying this, you know, I'm getting that wow feeling. I mean, this is so simple and basic, but most of us never think about it. I mean, I'm amazed and I'm I'm going to apply it right away. I don't know about our listeners or anybody, but I'm going to start it from today onwards. This is amazing. And when you were saying that, you know, about the business owners and everything, it reminds me of something. One of my clients, she is a business owner and what happened recently with her was that uh, she was facing some issues with her older clients. So maybe they were not very happy with her services and something. So I suggested her something. I said, so write a simple thank you note, handwritten note, and send it via post to your existing clients saying, thank you so much for trusting us and being with us for one year. So it was their anniversary. So at that time, I suggested, and you won't believe it did so miracles for her that out of her stale clients who were no longer taking her services, she got back almost 25% of them by sending a simple thank you note to them. So I completely agree that gratitude really works. Okay, so there is one more thing that I saw in your profile when I was going through it. That was mindfulness. So how do you practice mindfulness and how does it work for people? So, you know, mindfulness is also one of the most important uh, aspect that we can do it in today's life. Because, you know, what happens is we have like 10 things to do in a day. So always we are multitasking. We are okay. doing two tasks at a time. We, if, even if we are like, like right now, if we are having a podcast, maybe in our mind it would be going on what would be the next hour we would be doing it. So here what importance is mindfulness comes in. Because, you know, you have to be just being physically present at one place. It doesn't mean that you are there. You right. have to be mentally, emotionally, physically present in that thing. And then only you can see the difference that, you know, uh, that the mindfulness is there. And then you can see that, you know, your efficiency and so increases. So mindfulness is very important. So how you can do mindfulness is by, first of all, breathing exercises is very, very important. If you are thinking that, you know, uh, you are getting very, you are getting distracted. There is a rule called 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. If you are distracted in a day and you are at your business desk and you feel like, you know, now how to get back my concentration, what you can do is five things that you can see in, you know, in the, in your cabin or in your office. So just see five things. Then four things that you can touch. Then three things that you can smell. Two things that you can hear. And one thing that you can touch. Uh, you can taste. So what happens is when all our senses come back to present moment, we all will become mindful. We'll become more present. And because it is, you know, the senses are working here and there. That is why we are distracted at times. So mindfulness plays a very, very crucial role. If we have to improve our efficiency, if we have to improve our effectiveness in work, and if we want to be, be have a better productivity at work, it is at work or at home or even when you are with your kids, if you are not mindful while playing with them or when you're not mindful when they are saying something to you, so that time is not uh, counted. Right. So very very important that you know we are mindful at one place we are whenever we are doing a task we have to be mentally emotionally and physically present in that task so your mindfulness plays a very crucial role so i completely agree and i believe that if we become mindful it is going to bring a lot of positive changes in our life one, we'll have better relations because I think this is one problem that many of us face that we are talking to somebody and we feel that the person is not paying attention to us. And then, you know, uh, you gave an amazing tip. 
that doing that uh, five, four, three, two, one exercise. It is amazing because it happens many times. And if we are mindful while doing our work, we are able to gather our attention back. I think it is going to improve our productivity as well and our efficiency as well because we'll be able to complete our yes. work in a better way while we are able to gather our attention. So this is simply amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay, so Anshita, tell me one more thing. Like you have been doing so many things together. You are a mom, you are an author, you also create content, you are a gratitude mindful coach, consultant, you give trainings, like a hell lot of things. So how do you manage all this all together? So, you know, I have divided my days into uh, different, different work that I do. So, uh, as uh, two days are dedicated for my school. So that time I'm mindful that, you know, whenever I am at school, I am, you know, completely and involved into it. So mindfulness has helped me a lot. It, gratitude and mindfulness has actually helped me a lot to do a lot of things. Mm. Because, you know, whenever you are thankful, whenever you are giving gra grateful, you know, I, I will just give you one example. What happens is if we are traveling from Jaipur to Delhi or to from any city, two cities, right? If we go in the morning, we'll have less of traffic. But if we'll go in daytime, we'll see a lot of traffic jam, right? Yeah. So that's how gratitude has helped me in my life. So if I am, if I want to achieve something, my path has been cleared and I feel that, you know, God is always, gratitude has always helped me in that path. That, you know, from going from one place, one destination to another, I've always seen that, you know, the work has been done very quickly because I was practicing gratitude in that situation. And being mindful has also helped me a lot. Like I have two kids. So if I'm spending time with my two kids, so I'll just give you an example. Today in the morning only, it was a holiday. So I went on a trek with my kids. So that, that time, my full concentration and my full attention was to how to enjoy that time. So when you are giving that time to any of your relations in your life or whenever you are at your professional end, when you are giving your 100% over there, you will definitely see the result. Hmm. And if right. I talk about trainings and being and taking workshops for gratitude uh, and being a speaker, that is like I really love doing that. So that is like more like a hobby to me. Hmm. So... Uh, that's how and content creation is also I feel that if I my content can inspire even one person my job is done hmm. so that is how I keep my purpose and my things very clear when I whenever it comes to creating something absolutely and you know I always focus on this I as I work with women entrepreneurs primarily and we as a women we face a lot of challenges because somehow, no matter what, no matter how much advanced we are, still the primary responsibility of home and kids is on us. So sometimes it becomes a little difficult. And uh, rather, I wouldn't say difficult. Sometimes we start feeling mother's guilt that I'm not able to give time to my children. I'm not able to give time to my family. I'm not able. We feel overwhelmed with work and we get so confused. We don't know what are we actually doing. So I always tell my clients that rather than focusing on quantity of time, it's better to focus on quality of time. See, if you are spending one hour with your kid and side by side you are doing your work, side by side you are taking official calls, it is of no use. It's better you spend 15 minutes, 20 minutes, but that 20 minutes should be completely theirs. So when I spend time with my son, I turn off my laptop, I keep my phone away, then only I talk to him. Because that is of no use that he is saying something and I am saying something else. And even he gets irritated. He is only 7 years old. But he is after my life. He will say, Mama, it's better you complete your work first. Then we will talk. <laughs> so he also does like this. Yeah. So this is something yeah. which is actually very, very important. So you have shared such valuable tips and advice. So can you share some tips for and advice for the parents as well? Because you also work as a parenting coach. Like, what are the things they must keep in mind when they deal with their children? So, you know, whenever you are dealing with your kids and if you're working and you feel like how to spend the quality time, it's best to have activities with your kids. Like, for example, you can take them to a park. And that time, it will be an outdoor and a refreshing thing for you as well. And it will be a very good connection time with your kids. Because that time, you will be playing with your kid. And that is what your kids want. Your kids do not want perfect parents. 
your kids want happy parents so first of all we have to make a point that you know we are happy around our kids because that's what they they are really looking for they're not looking for ki meri mom kaisi lag rahi hai is she looking perfect or not or they just want that mom kitni happy hai hmm. so in that case whenever you know you have to spend time make sure that you're spending time with an activity in your mind like either you can play such age old games like hide and seek ice and water they do wonders because this is what kids want that somebody plays with them hmm so you know we should make their childhood fun by being fun you know by spending that fun time with them and when you are spending that fun time automatically you will be away from your gadgets you will be away from different other things you nothing will go in your mind because when you are playing your complete attention your complete mind and body are working towards that game so then you ask you you will become mindful as well and then you will make, you will have that time where you can make your kids learn about life skills so i've been an advocate for the life skills as well because you know at this age we should make a point that you know our kids are learning a lot you right. know life skills that is what is more important academics will be taken care of curriculums and all of that will be taken care of but the kids should know that how they can survive in this world hmm so that emotion quotient that iq and emotional quotient and social quotient will only come when they are playing with you and you can address something you can tell them through your stories that in your childhood you also did something like this so by narrating your own stories you can make your kids learn a lot of things and that is why it is very important that you know we spend that fun time with kids and not like you know <clears throat> do not mistake this time by making them do homeworks hmm if you are making them do homeworks that is not counted as a time you are spending with your kid because any which way it is not a time that your child is enjoying that time your child is just doing a homework he is just completing a task so if you feel like as a parent that apne homework kara diya and then you have you are done with your responsibilities that's not right we hmm. might feel that you know we have done with our responsibilities but we haven't played with them so playing with them is a very very crucial and it is very very important because through play kids learn a lot of things and yes. i would want that advice that you know you you should play at least 15 to 20 minutes every day with your kids right and i know uh, i relate with with so much because we have been doing it unintentionally like i was not aware of it frankly speaking that playing is so important but i did it as a parent me and my husband we always play with our son and whenever he is free he'll always come to us and say mom i want to play with you or he wants to draw something like i'm going to do a drawing and then we'll talk about it he'll tell me this is what i so i think drawing also uh, you know increases the creativity of child because whatever is in their mind they can put it on paper so this gives them yeah. one way to express their emotions as well because this is something which is really required our children and we as well we are bad at expressing our emotions we don't know how to express it we don't know how to recognize our emotions so this is extremely important for children and you know our audience are most of the school principals and educators as well this is something we tell to children i mean schools as well activity based learning we are already advocating it a lot life skills we are advocating it a lot but still i see in schools around me there are still very less schools who actually focus on this many a times it is left on paper and they don't do it in reality but still via this platform i would really like to request all the principals teachers that please exhibit the responsibility you have the responsibility of the future of our kids our kids and your kids as well because your kids are also in the schools so please do this please include a lot of play activities that is the need of the hour life skills our kids must learn because the cases of depression and everything are increasing day by day having mindfulness gratitude all of this is going to help okay tell us one more thing uh, like there are a lot of things that are going in terms of gratitude and mindfulness and one of them is positive affirmations how does it work do they actually work for people so positive affirmations work wonders for people 
so uh, in my class and you know i have educated more than 3000 kids till now so whenever any child has been studied from me they know what is the importance of positive mm-hmm. affirmations because first line that i ask them is how are you and none of my kids say me i am fine they always say me i am awesome you know there are certain kids who have also named me as an awesome teacher they tell me hamari awesome ma'am aa gayi hai because that is what i teach them that any time whenever you somebody asks you how are you you will not say i am fine you are going to say i am awesome and when you say this you see that power coming in you see that positivity coming in mm-hmm. and immediately the other person will also start smiling right we can try this with our kids as well like you can also try it with your son you know just teach him that you know whenever somebody asks you you just say i am awesome and you will yourself see that you know how much importance it is there so when i teach them a gratitude in my workshops i also teach them about positive affirmations i tell them that whatever we use the word after i am we will become it because words have power it is always say spelling what is spelling if we cut it it's actually a spell hmm. so it will words cast spell so we have to be really really careful whenever we are speaking something so if we say that i am fit we will automatically start feeling fit if we'll say i am beautiful we will automatically start feeling beautiful so that's the power of positive affirmations because our subconscious mind whenever we are repeating positive affirmations we are training our subconscious mind to believe in it mm. and when our subconscious mind believes in it that yes i am awesome i'm intelligent i'm superb i'm fit fine smart automatically we will see that you know actually those feelings have started coming in and we will start performing that way i so couldn't agree time, more yeah so in covid times what happened was i was training the kids by telling them that you have to repeat this every single time every single day i am fit fine and healthy my lungs are working perfectly so whenever they were using these we saw that there was lot of kids who didn't even get covid hmm because your positivity will definitely fight your immune system will become so powerful that you know any infection you you can definitely fight with it so positive affirmations positive affirmations have lots and lots of benefits right right and you know there is a science behind it as well our brain has ras which is called as reticular activating system which says that whatever we throw in our mind it act it acts in a similar way like if you start your day saying that i have a bad day today so everything that is going to happen around you is going to be bad but if you start your day with positivity your day will get positive you will get all the positive results you will get everything good and awesome around you amazing around you so i completely agree with this and i myself i am a strong advocate of positivity and thing because i have i have done it for myself and when i do mindset session with my coaches i do it with them as well i tell i work on the mindset first because until unless you are going to have a positive mindset your business nothing in your life is going to bring you positive results so having a positive yeah. mindset is extremely important whenever you are starting anything new so that's amazing and you know the tips that you have shared are amazing as well anshita so anshita there are so many things that i want to talk uh, talk with you but the time is running short i think we need to have another podcast to talk about all the other things but still uh, tell us one thing like doing this yourself advocating so many things together working as a early childhood educator and a business woman yourself have you ever faced any challenge as a woman because when i talk to other business women they say that we have faced a lot of challenges like for men counterparts it's quite easy so has practicing gratitude and mindfulness helped you this way as well like overcoming your challenges in gratitude it doesn't mean that challenges won't come so challenges and obstacles have been there in my life as well because you know uh, i got expect like in the first year of the school only i started expecting my second child and when my second child was just even one month old i started going to school again because there was nobody who could take care of the school during that time so mm-hmm. as a woman i had lot of challenges when i 
see about you know flipping the sides of being a mother being a wife being a daughter daughter in law and also a business woman so there had been lots and lots of challenges but yes gratitude has helped me to navigate those challenges through through those challenges and it has helped me to give me solutions so gratitude has helped me to give solutions to those problems if one problem has arrived and if i am not able to find solution to it you know if i practice gratitude in that situation i have seen that i have got better solutions and it had helped me to come out of that situation much more uh, you know in a better way in a more you know beautiful way so yes challenges and i know that you know even if i am practicing gratitude it doesn't mean that challenges won't come problems won't come they are a part and parcel of our life but only how we can have a positive mindset during that time is what will help us to come out of that time right so thank you so much anshita for sharing your insights what is one message you would like to give today to our audience that they can take away with them so uh, one message that i would like to tell you is a grateful heart is a magnet of miracles and that is what is very very important if we have a grateful heart it will become a magnet of miracles so that is one message that i want to give and also second message that i would like to give is play 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 and play with your children they really want it because we are shaping future generation we are shaping tomorrow's generation so it is very important that we play with them so that we can we spend time with them so that we can give them wisdom we can give them intelligence and you know we can provide them with the best skills that you know they will have it for future so these two messages i would like to thank you so much today. anshita thank you so much for taking out your time you have been a wonderful guest and uh, thank you so much everyone who was watching us today who was listening to us on different channels This is Ashleen Gore signing off. Thank you. See you in the next episode. Bye bye.